So Jesus tells James and John that my chalice you will indeed drink. And that chalice is the chalice of suffering um, in life and up to the point of giving one's life as a ransom for many. And he tells them that you'll indeed drink this cup with me, which means that they'll share in the great dignity of uh, sharing in, the, in the, the effect, the ministry of the salvation of souls. The apostles really did, really were extensions of Jesus by virtue of, of their, the, the grace that they received from him, their love that they had for him. They became members of his body and thus extensions of his ministry. And so they really did save souls. And then they had appointed uh, others to succeed them, who, having been made members of Christ's body by drinking the same cup in the waters of baptism, living their lives, willing to accept the sufferings of the daily crosses that the Lord gives up to, the, up to and at the point of death, also save souls, and so on and so on and so on until today. And by extension, those bishops who share that chalice with all who ask in the waters of baptism become co-heirs of Jesus and sharers in his ministry. James had his head lopped off in Jerusalem. He was the first bishop of Jerusalem. And Peter was crucified upside down in Rome. Paul had his head lopped off. I kind of envy James and, and, uh, and Paul. I wouldn't want to be Peter, right? A quick slash of the sword is much better than getting nailed upside down on a cross. <clears throat> Makes for a good story. I wouldn't want to do it. These, there's, there's a reason these men are called the foundation of the church, by Jesus himself, as a matter of fact. And it's not because they're perfect. You see what petty men they are early on in the ministry. How did these petty men, men of jealousy for position and envy of those who had the gall to ask for it, become such heroes and champions of of a form of power that is made perfect in weakness. That greatness, that the greatness achieved is only done so through uh, meekness and service, selflessness, unconcern. It's only through the grace that Jesus gives in the relationship that they have with him. And it's the same relationship that he offers us. A different vocation, a different, uh, a different degree of, of destiny, to be sure, but the same relationship of friendship, the same access, the same concern that he has for you and for me as he had for James and John and Peter and Bartholomew and, and Matthew. We are his friends as they were his friends. We also have drank the cup that he has drank. And each and every day we are given the opportunity to say with Jesus as he was in the garden, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours be done. The moment we were baptized, we drank of that chalice. The moment we were baptized and the old man died and the new man, Christ Jesus, was put on, the moment we were regenerated in the model, not of Adam and Eve, but of the son of the father, we drank of that chalice. We became members of his body, co-heirs of heaven, and are sent to do the work that he does, just as the father sent him. We look at men like James and John, who suffered exile and, and, and estrangement, and Peter and Paul. We don't look at them because they did something for us, though they did. We look at them because they are models of what God has asked us to do with him. 